Hello everyone. Welcome back to Elevate in Spirit. Today, I will continue to talk about how powerful your imagination is. We've already talked about a lot in the first three episodes. I've explained what an imagination is and shown that we use them all the time. Without them, you wouldn't be able to think of anything you couldn't do. I've also tried to explain those things and talked about how God was even challenged by our imaginations. I'm going to share a lot more, and I've already shared a lot. In Genesis 11 verse 6, God says, The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. I agree that. If you can imagine it, you can do it. The problem is that most people use their imaginations in a negative way. And unless you consciously use them in a positive way, they will always lean toward being negative. Here are some verses from the book of Romans that talk about this. In Romans chapter 1, verse 16 to 17 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For in the gospel the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. In this verse, Paul talked about the power of the gospel, saying that it is the power of God to salvation. The word gospel means good news, or nearly too good to be true news. And a lot of what religious people say these days sounds almost too good to be true, but this is specifically about how everything we receive from God is given to us without us having to earn it. It's called grace. And religious people will tell you that you need to tell people that God's wrath is coming onto them. Fear of judgment is what usually drives them to do the right thing, so when you talk about God's grace and love, some people just ask themselves, why serve God? But there is a better reason to do what I'm doing than fear. Fear hurts and love will make you want to live a holy life too. It won't have any of the bad effects though. As a result, whenever you say that God's kindness is in the gospel, some will ask, what about letting people know who they are as sinners? While in Romans chapter one, verse 18 to 20 says, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. It's already been revealed by God that we are all sinners and have fallen short of His greatness. Everyone has a natural understanding of all that is evil and wrong. Additionally, the rest of this first chapter of Romans begins to show that even though these things are true and everyone knows that there is a God, that they have sinned against Him, and that they need a Savior, you can turn away from that and become insensitive to it. As a matter of fact, in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 2 says, Such teachings come through hypocritical liars, whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. The message of this verse is just like when you cauterize a wound, you can burn the flesh with a hot iron or a particular thing, sealing the wound and keeping contamination out, but it also kills all your nerves and makes you numb so that you can't feel anything. In Romans chapter 1, verse 21, it outlines these steps that people must take over time to stop caring about God's things. And it says, For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him, but their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. When it says they don't glorify God, it means they didn't give God the respect He deserved. They didn't honor Him, so they turned away from Him and didn't praise Him as God. People are becoming more and more unthankful, which is very cruel and makes our hearts harder to soften. It also makes it harder for us to think of godly things. I say all of this to show that I'm talking about the power of imagination. If you don't make an effort to seek God and use your imagination in a good way, then you are hardening your conscience and becoming insensitive to God's belief. A vain imagination. It basically breaks you down spiritually to the point where you can't think straight. And I tell you, this is why so many things are happening. People can't tell if they're male or female. They can't decide which bathroom to use. 
they're just making stupid decisions that go against all logic and natural laws. How can this happen? Because people don't value God as much as they should. This is true in Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 says, For he is the kind of person who is always thinking about the cost. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. And in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. This is another way of saying that the way you think about it in your heart is how your life will be. You can't just pray for things to change and have God make them happen. No. Change comes from the inside. When you accept the truths in your heart, have faith, and start following it, that's when change starts on the inside before it shows up on the outside. I've been using scriptures out of Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Imagination, mind, and heart are where you can see and think of things. It's not like miracles just happen. You have to figure them out before you can give birth to one. People who need healing in their bodies, don't just go to someone to pray for them or go to God and beg him to heal them. You think of it, you take God's word. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. The word for plant. The word seed comes from the Greek word spora, which is also the root of the word sperma. According to studies of words, spora comes from sperma, which is also the root of the word sperm. The word of God is his sperm. If you put it in your heart, it will help you have a miracle. I think most Christians don't get this, which is why they pray things like, God please supply my need when they're talking about prosperity. But have you thought about that miracle? I will give you this scripture as the example from Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he sware unto thy fathers as it is this day. You don't get money from God. Think about the promise of God in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 and ask yourself, I'm not just praying for money to fall from the sky. God has given me power and anointing. How do I release that? Then you add Luke chapter 6 verse 38 and 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and start learning how to plant seeds and give, and it will be given to you. You think about these truths from God's word and meditate on them. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you for joining us on this journey of the power of imagination. And if you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. As always, may your journey be filled with the abundant blessings of God. Until next time, thanks for watching. From Elevate in Spirit.